Hello. In this tutorial, I will show you how pedestrians work and how to make a pedestrian do custom things. For example, during this tutorial, I will make any pedestrian wave when it sees the player's car. Now I want to briefly explain how the system works. To control the pedestrian's action and make it highly customizable, a behavior-like model is used by mobile pedestrian system. Each pedestrian can implement a series of behaviors prioritized by importance. As you can see here, the least important behavior is walk, and the most important behavior is dead. Only one behavior can run at a time, the one with the highest priority. For example, if a pedestrian runs and sees an obstacle, we'll stop the running behavior and we'll start executing the avoid static obstacle behavior. Each behavior is managed by its own script, allowing developers to easily extend existing functionality and add new behaviors. These behaviors are included in the mobile pedestrian system package. If you want to learn more about each of them, I recommend you to read the documentation. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to create a new custom behavior, so let's start doing that now. The first thing is to add this wave animation to an animator. Since this is a package, I recommend you to duplicate the default animator if you want to edit it. If not, it will be overridden at each package update and that is not desirable. Add a new state inside the animator and add the wave animation to it. From any state create a transition to the new state and another transition to the move blend tree. To be able to transition to this state create a trigger called start waving. Add the trigger to the transition from any state. After the wave animation is finished, transition back to the move using exit time. Name the state wave. Now it is time to create a script for the new behavior. I will call it wave behavior. Every behavior needs to extend the pedestrian behavior abstract class. This class includes all the necessary properties and methods required by the system to use the custom behaviors. I will go over them while I will implement it inside wave behavior. Right click and implement the abstract methods. Execute is equivalent to the update method. It will be called on each frame if this behavior is active. The entire logic of your behavior should go here. The onDestroy method is equivalent to onDestroy method of any mono behavior. If the instance is destroyed, this method will be called. This should be used for cleanup events and other persistent things. I will start this wave behavior when I press space to be easier to test at first, then I will start using the pedestrian trigger as I previously said. The first thing I will do is to store the name of the wave trigger to a variable and also the hash of the default move state to be able to use them easily inside the code. Now I will override the onBecomeActive method. This method is called every time this behavior starts running. You also have the onBecomeInactive method called every time the behavior becomes inactive. The onReset method is called every time the pedestrian becomes inactive, not the behavior. Now let's go back to our implementation. The first thing we want to do is to stop the movement of the pedestrian so it can stand and wave. For this, use animator methods dot stop moving. Animator methods is a class that controls the movement of the animator. It has the speed and angle properties. A free walk method which is actually moving the pedestrian around and a look at target method that rotates the pedestrian towards the next waypoint. It has two useful methods. Stop moving which sets the animator speed to zero but keeps the current rotation and the stop method which resets both angle and speed to zero. All the methods are virtual so you can override them from your own script. Now let's trigger the wave animation. You have the character animator property which already contains a reference to the animator component from the character. Set the start waving trigger. The pedestrian behavior contains other properties that you might find useful like the name of the pedestrian and the priority of the current behavior. This is automatically determined by the system. 
The Pedestrian Index. You already know about character animator and animator methods. Let's continue our implementation. If we look at the animator, we set the trigger, and now our pedestrian is performing the wave animation, but when the animation finishes, we should automatically stop the wave behavior. To do that, we have to detect if the animator is back into the move blend tree state. Inside the execute method, the first thing to check is if the current behavior is running. To do that, use the is running method. This returns true if the current behavior is running. Now let's check if the state of the animator is the move state. Remember we stored the hash earlier. If this is the case, call the stop method. This method stops the current behavior. Basically, that is all you need to do to make a pedestrian wave. As we did with the animator, let's make a new behavior list and not modify the default one. You need to implement the iBehaviorList interface. Inside get behaviors, return a new list of pedestrian behavior. For now, I will add just the walk and the wave behaviors. As you can see, I am using the demo scene that comes with the package. I will remove the pedestrian system component and create a custom one to show you how easy it is to start the pedestrian system from the API. I will create a test script and make a public reference to the player and another one of the pedestrian pool. These are required. You can load them through code, but now it is easier this way. I will use the start method to initialize the plugin. First, let's pass our custom behavior list. To do that, create a pedestrian system options variable and on the pedestrian behaviors property pass a new instance of the my behavior list class. You can set the other properties if you want, but for this test, I only need my behaviors. Now call the initialize method and pass the player object. For the number of pedestrians, I will use one to be more easy to debug. Pass the pedestrian pool in the options variable. To start our wave behavior, let's use the space key. Check inside update method if the space was pressed. If it was, start the behavior. Insert the name of the behavior you want to start, in this case, wave behavior, and the pedestrian index on which you want this behavior to run. Since we have a single pedestrian, the index will be zero. Assign this script to the script's holder object and assign the player and the pedestrian pool. Make sure debug pedestrian AI is on for a better view. I assume that your pedestrian system is already configured inside your project. If not, check the install and test tutorial for how to configure it. Press play. Notice that the pedestrian is moving. Now if I press space, the pedestrian switches into the wave state. There is an issue. As you can see from the AI states, the pedestrian did not move to the wave state. This is because the behavior stopped early. If we take a look at the animator, when the execute method was called, the animator was still in the move blend tree state. So our code called the stop method and the behavior was marked as done. To do this properly, we have to delay the state check. For that, we have to introduce a Boolean variable to check if the animator is in the wave state, and only after that to check that the animator is back inside move state. Create a bool variable. If the state change variable is false, that current state was not changed, else we check the move state. Now let's store a hash for the wave state. Check if the animator is in wave state, and if so, change the state change bool. Now our code verifies if it is in move state only after wave state was active. This should fix the previous issue. Let's see. The animation finished and it automatically resumed the movement. 
Now I will make it wave automatically when it sees the player's car with the trigger. Let's create a constructor for the behavior and subscribe to the on object trigger enter event. Generate the handler method. Don't forget to remove the event inside on destroy. Now let's verify if the pedestrian index that triggered the event is this pedestrian. The on object trigger enter is triggered by any pedestrian. Verify if the object is the player. We do not want to wave at lamp posts. And the final check is to verify if this behavior can run. This means that was not started already. We do not want to start it multiple times. If all conditions are met, start the behavior. Now let's see if it works properly. Let me find the pedestrian and drive towards it. The behavior works as intended. The pedestrian stopped and now it's waving at me. Don't forget the priority of the behavior is important. For example, I will add a new behavior on top of the wave one. Let's say avoid dynamic obstacles. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the pedestrian is no longer waving at me. It tries to avoid me because the avoidance is more important than waving. Now I will put waving first in the behavior list and test. The pedestrian is waving. Keep in mind, even if conditions for two behaviors are met on the same time, only the one with the highest priority will be executed, so the order is very important. Using the information from this tutorial, you should be able to implement any type of custom behavior you want. I recommend you to take a look at the behaviors already implemented to understand more on how they work. If you have any questions, you can contact us on Discord. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more tutorials about pedestrian system or other interesting Unity topics.